One of the comments I get the most often is how nice it is to see a capsule wardrobe with color. And the reason why we often see a capsule wardrobe with neutrals is because neutrals are very easy to pair, they play very well with other colors, and they essentially make for a very versatile collection that can mix and match different pieces. However, minimalist wardrobes can also be very successful if you're working within a color palette. And in order to create a successful color palette, it's very helpful to understand the very basics of color theory. This is the first of a series of videos I'm starting on my channel all about color. I want to show you how to best use color to make the most out of your wardrobe, starting from the very basics of color theory, passing through color pairings, and how to select colors that are going to be very flattering for your complexion, all the way to how to create a color palette that will make the most of your wardrobe. And if you are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Fernanda and I am here to help you build a wardrobe that you love. So let's get started. There are three primary colors. They are called primary colors because they cannot be mixed from any other combination of colors. And the combination of these three essentially makes any color that you see in the universe. They are red, yellow, and blue. The important thing to note about the primary colors is that they sit equidistant to each other on the color wheel. Now, a lot of the times in modern times, you will see the primary colors represented as cyan, yellow, and magenta, like the three cartridges that come with your color printer. And the reason for that is that specifically when it comes to printing, those three colors allow for a broader range of colors to be produced from ink but they're essentially the same thing. For the purposes of this video, I'm gonna be sticking to the original colors, so we're gonna move forward with red, blue, and yellow. Next, we have secondary colors. Secondary colors are created by mixing two primary colors together. There's only three of them. They are orange, made by a combination of red and yellow, green, made by a combination of yellow and blue, and violet, made from a combination of red and blue. Notice that I didn't say purple, and the reason for that is that if you're familiar with the acronym of the colors of the rainbow, it's Roigi Viv, not Roigi Viv. So in this video, I'm gonna stick with the word violet. But this brings up an interesting point. Whatever you call a color is gonna vary greatly depending on where you're from, what way you've been brought up, your culture, and a lot of different things. So a lot of the times what we would call a color could mean something completely different in a different country or a different part of the world. Case in point, this color right here in the United States is called magenta. But if you're Mexican, like I am, this color is not magenta. It's called Mexican pink. At the end of the day, what you call a color doesn't really matter. What's important is that you learn how that color works with others so that you can actually get the effects that you want. Secondary colors, also important to note, also sit equidistant to each other in the color wheel. Next, we have tertiary colors. Tertiary colors are made from a combination of a primary color and a secondary color. There's many of them. If you think of a color wheel, the wheel itself is 360 degrees, so there's one degree variations of color all around the color wheel. But to keep it super simple, here we're gonna use a combination of red and orange to have a red-orange, combination of orange and yellow to have an orange-yellow, yellow and green to get this beautiful shade of yellow green, or in Mexico we would call it lime green, blue green, blue violet, and lastly, fuchsia. All of the colors that appear on the edge of the color wheel are called pure colors, and they're colors that have not been diluted in intensity and appear in their purest form. This brings up an interesting point about the difference between color and hue. A lot of the times when we use the word color, what we're really trying to convey is a hue. Colors are only those who have not been diluted in intensity and are at the purest form. As opposed to hues, hues are all of the variations within that specific color, whether you add white or black to it or gray, those are hues. And they really make up the majority of the colors, hues, that we see on a day-to-day -day basis. Let me show you a few examples. There are three main ways in which you can manipulate a pure color to create a different hue. The first way to do so is creating a tint, which is essentially having any pure color and adding white to it. So for example, here we have red in its purest form. This red has not been diluted or manipulated in any way. This is the shade of red that exists naturally in the world. But as we start adding white to it, 
we can see that the hue starts to change from a very natural red all the way to a soft, powdery, almost baby pink. And this is interesting to note. Pink on its own is not a color, it is actually a hue of red. And a lot of other hues that we see out in the world are actually just that, just hues of other colors and they don't exist on their own. Next we have shades. And shades are any pure color with the addition of black. To use that same primary red as an example, incrementally I'm going to start adding a little bit of black so that you can see how it changes from this berry color to a beautiful burgundy color all the way to this maroon. All of these colors are just shades of red. Here you can see the difference between the tints and the shades of the same primary or pure color. And to give you another example, here I have a secondary color, pure color, green, with all of its tints and all of its shades, and a tertiary pure color, fuchsia, with all of its tints and all of its shades. Notice that we have a little bit of lavender going on. Again, lavender, not a color on its own, it's actually a hue of fuchsia. Next we have tones. And contrary to tints and shades, which can manipulate any pure color, tones are manipulations of any hue with the addition of gray. So here I have all of the tints and shades of our primary color red, which I already showed you. And little by little, I'm gonna start adding a little bit of gray to them so that you can see how they start changing. And this is how you start to get your dusty pinks, your mauves, and essentially all of these colors that are more muted, if you wanna call them that, but essentially they just have gray added to them. Depending on how much gray you add or how dark that gray is, you can end up with either a muted hue of a certain color or you can end up with a color that presents purely gray with an undertone in either a warm or a cool color. For example, that's how you can get some cooler grays and warmer grays. They're essentially just gray with a tiny bit of addition of a certain red or a certain blue. All of the hues of a certain color together with its tints, tones, and shades form a color family. Now, our perception of color is always relative and will always vary depending on what else is around that color, how much light there is, how dark it is, and a million other things. So let me give you an example. This hue right here is somewhere between a yellow and an orange, and it's difficult to tell if it's an orange yellow or a yellow orange. The best way to tell is to compare it with two other pure colors. In this case, I'm gonna choose the purest form of yellow and the purest form of orange and already you can start to see how it relates to the other colors and how it changes depending on what is around it. So for example, if we remove the orange, you can start to see that our hue in question is a lot more orange than the pure yellow, and the pure yellow really stands out because of how bright it is. But if instead we remove the pure yellow and we put it next to orange, we can see that they are a lot more similar and that they really go together a lot closer and it doesn't clash like the way that it does with the pure yellow. So we can tell that this color is really an orange that is a little bit yellow. Some colors are considered warm colors and some others are considered cool colors. I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail about that because I'm gonna make a whole other video about color temperature. But for now, all you need to know is that reds, oranges, and yellows are considered warm colors, and violets, blues, and greens are considered cool colors. Successful color plants almost always feature one dominant color and have other colors play more of a secondary role. But how do you know what colors play nicely together? Well, for that, we use the color wheel. And the good news here is that essentially there's two basic ways to use color in a design, or in this case, in an outfit. The first one is contrast, which uses colors based on difference. Colors that essentially have nothing in common with each other. Think of a red and a green. They don't share a color at all. And on the other side, we have harmony, which uses colors based on likeness, using a common color with all selections. So if you have violet, blue, and green, those all share blue. Within those two basic pillars, shall we call them, there are some color schemes that you can use. And these are all based on the color wheel. So if you're not already familiar with this, I highly recommend that you get one. I have a few actually that look different ways so that I can give myself an idea, especially when I'm shopping or when I'm trying to put together a combination so that I can kind of, it's a cheat sheet. Just get yourself a cheat sheet. The easiest color scheme to understand is monochromatic which essentially uses only the tints, tones, and shades of a pure color. 
So for this example, I want to show you fuchsia, and then I have four different hues of that same color. I have a tint, two tones, and then a shade. And then you can see how if we put a design together with all of these colors, it'll still overall look fuchsia, but there will be some contrast in it and some essentially point of interest. When you're using monochromatic color palettes, you want to make sure that you're varying the degree of intensity of each color, otherwise it can tend to look a little bit flat. Next we have complementary color schemes. And complementary color schemes uses two hues opposite each other on the color wheel. For example, red and green. They have nothing in common. The thing with complementary color schemes is that the eye doesn't love them. The contrast itself can be a little bit jarring to the eye and it just looks a little bit off. But if you do like complementary colors, something that you can do is not use the pure color on their own, but instead use tints, tones, and shades. For example, here we have a tint of red, this very soft pink, and then we have a shade of green. And together it looks a lot better than the last one I just showed you, which just looks like Oh, just looks like a lot. So that is a way that you can use complementary colors. To give you another example, we have this orange yellow and violet blue, which on their own also looks a little bit too jarring, but then if we manipulate them, we can end up with this very beautiful shade of beige and this very dark violet rich color that would look very beautiful in the design of a scarf or perhaps even a skirt or something like that. Next, we have analogous color palettes. And analogous color palettes use one main pure color and a few neighboring ones that all share a common color. So this is essentially a harmony like I was telling you about earlier. So in this case, let's use blue as our main color. So if we wanna use three, four, even seven shades that are analogous to blue, then in this case, we're gonna use violet, blue-violet, and blue-green. And these all have in common that they all have blue in them. So here I've created an analogous color palette using blue as my main featured color. And you can see that my manipulating all of the pure colors to get all of these hues, this I think would be a beautiful color palette for somebody who's like a lawyer or works in corporate or something like that because it still has pops of color without having those pops of colors be so attention grabbing that they're distracting because a lot of the times you know, corporate has certain dress codes. Now, all of these colors are very cool, and when you're building a color palette, you do wanna have some warm tones, but we'll get to that in a different video. Next, we have analogous complementary, which is essentially one that didn't wanna pick a side and just chose the best of both worlds. But analogous complementary includes the complementary color of the featured color in an analogous color scheme. So let's use the same four colors that we were using before. But in this example, I'm gonna make the featured color this beautiful blue-violet. The complementary color of blue-violet is this beautiful orange-yellow. Now, on its own, with all the pure colors, this might look a little bit jarring and it won't go. But then if I go back to the hues that I had selected before, you can see that this starts to play together very nicely and that the warm tone really brings something to the whole palette and that it essentially brightens up the whole scheme. This can be something great to use when you're trying to have some variety in your wardrobe. Next, we have triadic color schemes, which includes a featured color and the two colors equidistant to it on the color wheel. So remember that I showed you earlier that the primary colors are equidistant to each other in the color wheel? They would be a triadic color scheme. Again, these can be a little bit jarring on the eye if you only use the pure colors, which is why they're very often used in marketing. Think of the Burger King logo, for example. It uses red, yellow, and blue. But in fashion, the best way to use it is to use different hues of these colors to make them look great. For example, here we have a triadic color scheme using only the primary colors as a source. And that yellow, for example, does look a little bit green, but that is in fact a tone of yellow. I'll show you that right here, you can just see that there's a gray circle that is covering the yellow circle. And to give you another example, I am using some of the tertiary colors on the color wheel in which I've manipulated in a way so that we end up with a very rich brown, a very bright blue that can complement that brown. And then I kept the lime green as pure as it comes just so that we can have a little pop of some brightness in there and some light. And lastly, on the color schemes, we have split complementary. 
which essentially includes one main color and the two colors adjacent to its complement. And the eye tends to love this a lot. For example, the split complements of fuchsia are yellow and lime green. And on their own, they can look a little bit too bright and a little bit like playful, like it's this is very common in children's toys or stuff like that. But if you're gonna use it for your wardrobe, what you can do is manipulate those colors so that you end up with this really beautiful eggplant, keep the yellow in its purest form, and then like end up with this beautiful sage green. And that will end up giving you a very pleasing color palette to work with. So this can give you an idea of how you can use color to start building your color palette so that your wardrobe works together a lot better. There are probably items that you have in your closet right now that you haven't worn because you think they don't go with anything else in your closet. And that's maybe not true. Maybe there is something in your closet that you can pair nicely with it that you just haven't thought of. So start thinking a little bit outside of the box by taking into account all of these different color schemes and see what you can come up with. Let me know in the comments, is color something that you already consider when shopping for items of your wardrobe? Or what about your skin undertone? Do you specifically look for colors that will complement your skin tone when you're shopping? I would love to know. Leave me a comment below. If you like this video, please don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. It helps me out a lot and it is the easiest way to support my channel. And if you're new, don't forget to subscribe before you leave so that you don't miss the rest of the color series. Make sure to ring that bell so that you're notified every time I post new videos. If you haven't seen it already and you want to see a wardrobe with a very cohesive color palette, then I will leave you my year-round capsule wardrobe video linked over here. I had a lot of fun putting together a color palette that would change season to season. So I highly recommend you check that out. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next Thursday. Bye.